This is Adam Rosh from Roshcast, and I want to welcome you to another episode of The Reveal, where I will take you inside the mind of a test taker to deconstruct and connect the dots of a board style question so you can become a better student, transform how you learn, and excel not only on high stakes exams, but also in your general medical knowledge. So let's get started. So we have an 18 month old boy presents to the emergency department with worsening shortness of breath. The parents report he has had a cough, runny nose and fussiness for the past five days. On exam, the patient demonstrates subcostal retractions, tachypnea and diffuse wheezing. The patient is given an albuterol nebulizer treatment without any improvement of his wheezing. Chest x-ray does not show any abnormality. Which of the following organisms is the most likely cause of his symptoms? All right, <clears throat> so uh, first we have to make the diagnosis here. This is a two-step question, and then identify the organism responsible for that disease process. Let's dive into this question. So we have an 18-month-old boy, so under two years old, and some key findings here. Looks like typical URI symptoms here, and it's been going on for only five days, and that's going to be important. And the infant's in, so it looks like some mild distress, working pretty hard here with subcostal retractions, tachypnea, and diffuse wheezing. And wheezing here is important. The infant received albuterol, and there was no response. And the other important aspect here is the chest x-ray does not show any abnormality. So let's look at this one by one here. All right, so if we were thinking about Bordetella pertussis, most of these infants and patients will have the classic whooping cough. They will have a prolonged cough, usually for about two weeks, maybe some post-tussive emesis, and we don't see any of that here. So let's cross that off the list. The other kind of outlier here is Haemophilus influenzae, which causes pneumonia. Uh, Haemophilus was the most common cause of things like epiglottitis and meningitis, but the Hib vaccine has limited those. Nonetheless, we would usually see some x-ray findings of a pneumonia here. And the key thing here highlighted is the chest x-ray does not show any abnormality. So I'm going to cross off Haemophilus influenza. And then we're left with two viruses. And these are related uh, in that they cause similar clinical syndromes. But let's look at parainfluenza virus. And parainfluenza virus is most closely associated with croup. Croup will occur in older individuals typically than 18 months old. It was, it's most common a, a few years older, uh, and it's associated with a classic uh, strider in, in moderate cases, moderate to severe cases. Patients here may have a low-grade fever or maybe something approaching fever. In general, they are not in this much distress. So parainfluenza virus is most closely with croup. This doesn't look like croup. However, it also causes another condition, uh, which leads us to respiratory syncytial virus. So I am going to X out parainfluenza virus for now, but it definitely, definitely is considered here. But I think RSV is the most is the best answer here. RSV causes bronchiolitis, and the kind of the giveaway for me here is that this is a young patient, okay? Under two years old, bronchiolitis is the most common uh, respiratory infection that's gonna present like this. More than just the common cold here, this patient is in some distress and the X-ray is essentially normal here. You will see that in RSV. Uh, and there's been no response with albuterol. So I am gonna go with RSV here and let me select that and see what we get. RSV is indeed the correct answer, leading to bronchiolitis. Hey everyone, before you go, if you're interested in your own QBank, whether you are an MD or DO, a PA, 
or an MP, simply go to roshreview.com and sign up for a free trial. See if Rosh Review's content is right for you. Keep learning, keep working hard, and always have a sense of mission about your work. Now is your time. This is Dr. Adam Rosh, signing off.